This week we're back catching up with three damsels with sizeable demands. It's not very big. I wanted to go for a breakfast bar, but that's not going to work, is it? Was it going to be tears before bedtime? That's a two and a half thousand pound breakfast bar. Mm. Your job is to find a house. Uh, it's not to tell her how to, how to live. Clearly, something has gone really badly wrong. Or did we ultimately get the measure of them? I'm always big up there. There's only one thing you need, and that's you need to hold your hand. This week, we're catching up with a trio of female house hunters, all of whom wanted our help to find them their dream first homes. But these were searches that came with a fair amount of emotion. Emma Wilcox and Kelly Price were searching southeast of Reading, where Hampshire meets Berkshire, for a home together. And law student Kate Harland was looking in Liverpool for a peaceful pad alone. One of Liverpool's hip neighbourhoods is Egbert, home to cool kids and creatives. So it's no surprise that our stylish law student Kate loves to hang out there. He's got the most mischievous grin. <laughs> <laughs> After a gap year which lasted half a decade, smart student Kate knows it's time to cut back on the cocktails and knuckle down to her final year. Kate shares a house in Wavertree, but with five other students on the scene, space and peace is at a premium. You never know what you're going to come home to. So, like, you could be really wanting to just chill out and there'll be a huge party going on in the room. So it is hard to study. This savvy student has decided that for her, the party is over. This next year at uni is going to be a lot of work. It's worth 70% of my degree and I'm doing quite well, miraculously. So I need to keep that momentum going. So having my own house next year will be a way for me to not be tempted into the drinking and the, and the student life so much. Kate isn't the first in the family to have sampled student life in this city. My dad went to Liverpool University as well. He used to live round the corner from where I live now, so there's a bit of a sentimental twist to it as well. But sadly, Kate's dad died three years ago. We didn't know obviously that he was going to pass away, so it came as a bit of a shock. Kate's dad made sure that even after he was gone, all his kids would be looked after. He wrote in his will that he wanted me and my brothers to buy a house each. That was really important to him, that he was making a provision that when he wasn't there anymore, that we still had somewhere to call home. Kate's been left an inheritance of £120,000. That's a lot of cash for a first-time buyer, so it's time for me to take the law into my own hands. Most people at 25 don't have all the money they need to buy a house. Are you worried about buying young and alone? I think my family all, are all expecting me to buy either something that is completely inappropriate, that completely blows the budget, or is going to fall down. So I'm determined to prove them Wrong. Are you the only girl in your yes. family? Yeah, you see, everybody thinks girls spend money frivolously. They just spend money on different things. Thank you. Two peas in a pod. Shh, Phil, I'm here to help this girl spend her money wisely. To have this money at this stage in your life is a godsend. You make it sound so perfect. It is, it is perfect. <laughs> it is, th there's only one thing you need, and that's me to hold your hand. Modesty's never been your strong point, has it, Kirsty? Kate's got £120,000, but if she falls for a pad that's a few grand over, she's got a little leeway to stretch her budget. She's after a spacious two- or three-bed house, which should have an open-plan living area. And it's got to be close to university. Police officer Emma Wilcox and her partner, IT manager Kelly Price, are searching in Hampshire and Berkshire. Although they met four years ago, they've never owned a place together. For Kelly and Emma, spending £325,000 on a home is not only a major financial investment, but a huge emotional one as well. It's going to be our house, you know, a you know, joint mortgage. I'm really excited, can't wait, want like two things together and... Sorry. <laughs> Kelly has owned a property before, but Emma is a first-time buyer. And for her, this house isn't just about bricks and mortar. 
that's why we have to get this one right as well. For the last two months, they've been house-sitting in Aldershot for a friend who's on active duty in Afghanistan. She's back yeah. in a few months' time, so we need to make sure that we that we're out by then. Yeah, because we won't have anywhere to live otherwise. Yeah, we'll be homeless. <laughs> Kelly and Emma have a close-knit group of friends who they love to entertain. So finding the right size property where they can all spend time together is really important. But it's not just socialising that's a consideration here. They too have family responsibilities. Daisy is, uh, she's what, five years old now? So yes. I got her um, before Emma. And then we've got uh, Sammy. He's very much a mummy's boy. <laughs> yes. Time is not on our side for this one, so best to get cracking. So, it's your first purchase and your first home together. That's right, yes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Okie doke. Kelly, you first. Off the top of your head, what you want. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, nice living space, uh, a kitchen where we can entertain, and a nice sized garden. Definitely be up there. Emma? Uh, mine would be not to be on a main road, um, yes. somewhere we can go out for a walk together. What about the cats? Well, not on a main road. Not on a main road. That, no, my, no, not, that, is, my, okay. that is very yeah. much the top of my list. For their £325,000, they want a three-bedroomed property. No problem if it needs updating. For Kelly, size is important. It must have enough space to entertain family and friends, whereas Emma wants a quiet location that is safe for the cats. I've no idea why, but I sense trouble. It is all about finding the right home that is safe and cosy for the cats. And safe and cosy for Emma, she was brought up in rural rails. Can't say rural rails. It's obviously catching that thing you have with your oh, R's. Thank you very much indeed. <laughs> <laughs> well, we'd better get our R's into gear somehow if we're to find the perfect first home for Kelly and Emma, as their schedule is tight. They want us to focus on the area southeast of Reading, where Hampshire meets Berkshire. It's a good choice. You get great transport links into London and down to the coast. An average house here costs just over £218,000. Their favourite village is this one, Eversley. It's in the north of Hampshire, nine miles from Bracknell. When we first started searching, there were no suitable houses for sale here, so we sent out a shed load of flyers. If you've got a specific area you want to live in, bombarding it can work wonders, opening doors to properties no one else has seen. And it's worked for us, as word came back that one owner was thinking of selling. And here we are. But it's a bit of a coup, really, to, yeah. to, because the market's so tight. To get something before anybody else, we're, we're dead tough. We thought it was quite special. Yeah, yeah. it looks special. It's yeah, lovely. it does, yeah. No, it's um, broad is lovely for the cats. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah plenty definitely. Plenty of mice around here. I mean, <laughs> yeah, cats exactly. will be happy. Yeah, yeah definitely. definitely. This semi-detached cottage has two good-sized reception rooms and a decent-sized kitchen, perfect for entertaining. It's got the three bedrooms they were looking for and a massive garden. It was valued 18 months ago at 345,000, 20,000 above their budget, but the possibility of a private sale could shift that price. Dealing face-to-face -face with the owner can pay off. For a house like this, a vendor could save over £8,000 in estate agent fees, which means you can try and persuade them to reduce the price. But of course, this sort of direct negotiation isn't for the faint-hearted. Because they've shifted the staircase from where it would naturally have been, it opens up the middle of the house okay, yeah. for a dining area, kitchen, and 130 oh. foot of garden. Oh, wow, OK. Wow. Oh, <laughs> pretty at the back, isn't it? We thought it was a very, very pretty house. Yeah. The location is spot on. It's fab. I didn't like the way we walked into the front door and came straight into the, came straight into the front yeah. room. And it's not very big. When I first met Kelly and Emma, it did seem like they had quite different criteria. And even at this early stage, that's coming home to roost. Why is it coming across that you feel more strongly about location than Kelly does? Well, I was surrounded by fields right. back home in ways where Kel grew up in, in a town, basically. So I like the field side of it. I feel like I'm like a part of Wales kind of thing. You take that with you. Emma obviously likes this place, so it's important we try and find a way to make it work for Kelly as well. It looks to me like there's, there has been a door in the past that would lead into the kitchen. OK, yeah. I'm sure you could put a door further along. Yeah. Um, and I reckon you could do a lot more with that conservatory. Yeah, because it's not really used, is it? No. Everyone loves a trial, Phil, and you're not the only one trying to get Kelly to like this place. 
Yeah, in the so bathroom. Yeah, it's quite small. She hasn't got a bath. Yeah, but a nice big shower. This would be the master bedroom. Yeah. Might be a little bit too small though. I mean, the view is fantastic. Yeah, the view is amazing. Guys and Sammy and Daisy out there. Yeah, they would love that. Yeah. yeah. Enjoying being up there. Well, I was thinking awesome. this is about the height difference between Kelly and Emma, which might be why Emma doesn't think that house is okay. small and Kelly does. Yeah, possibly. They're a nice couple, though. They're a really nice couple, and I wouldn't want to have any kind of divide and rule no, stuff. Especially, especially <laughs> not in a house one. No. Come to think of it, though, we have got a bit of a divide. Well, there we have it. How did we get on? Yeah, I think beautiful yes. location. Yeah, it's uh, fabulous. I feel the house is a bit too small. Kitchen, my eyes, big enough, and bedroom size is not far off either, really. I've got to say, it sounds like Kelly's walking away from this house saying adieu and Emma's moving in. Possibly. Quite a lot of compromises the way you come in the front door. Yeah. What a shame. With a bit of patience, this place could be a great home in a near-perfect location, but it seems Kelly just won't compromise on the size issue. We're back catching up with three damsels who are desperate to find their dream homes. The first property we showed Kelly and Emma in North Hampshire scored big with Emma on location, but it was too small for Kelly. Kate Harland had an inheritance of £120,000 to buy her first home. She was studying and keen to stay in Liverpool, a city rich in maritime and musical history. The past decades seen it transform into a cosmopolitan capital of culture. It's a buyer's market here, so deals can hopefully be done. The average house price in Liverpool is just under 135 grand. Kate's favourite area is Egbert, but we're taking her two miles southeast from there to the up and coming Garston. This property is perfect for Kate's life now, and it's got young professional written all over it. Here we are. Yeah. We're in Garston, which is where a lot of the young professionals who might want to be in Egbeth but can't afford it come. Yeah. So the geography's positive. Yeah, it's positive. Sort of. Sort of. Okay, right. Ish. Yeah. Ish. I can, I can tell there's an ish. Despite that ish, Kate will get plenty of bang for her buck in Garston. This pretty terrace has two large bedrooms and every young girl's dream a massive bathroom, and there's even a pretty yard at the back. It's on just under £95,000, so she'd have a hefty chunk of cash to spare. Big, light, high ceilings. Exactly what I asked for. I like the open stairs as well. It reminds me yes. of my um, dad's house. Um, you can do all sorts of modern things with these stairs. So you can have open stairs which are glass or metal or whatever. You know, I mean, but you don't want to overspend. No. The important thing is not to spend the money on... Making the house too expensive for the yes. area. Yeah. Yeah, you've yeah. got it. You've already got the lingo. Do you think? Yeah. Go on, then, you go. <laughs> <laughs> I'll stay. She's the apprentice, and all sop, you're fired. Not quite, Phil, not quite. Very nice out there, isn't Very it? Very nice. Yeah, really nice little area. It would be tempting to just put in a hot tub, wouldn't it? <laughs> or one of those Japanese baths. Kate can afford to bathe al fresco or make any other alterations she wants because this house is 25 grand under her budget. It's everything that I would ask for. Although I, I wanted to go for a breakfast bar, but that's not going to work, is it? Well, you can. I mean, you could. That's the thing. You can do a different type of layout. Or if that ish about the area is actually an issue, she could spend more to get a similar house in a different area. I feel like if I'm walking in just going, well, no, I don't, I don't want this You're area then. You can afford... To do it, so why wouldn't I? To do it, so why wouldn't you? Yeah, why wouldn't I? Yeah. It was Kate's dad's wish that she put this money into property. She's worried about seeming like a brat because she doesn't like this area, she wants another area. The fact is that buying a house now is the right decision, she's doing the right thing, and she should be proud of that. If a better area is what Kate wants, then that is what I'm going to show her. But it's going to mean spending all of her budget. Before buying a property, think about what you want and where you want it. Whether it's a breakfast bar or being close to a coffee bar, knowing what matters to you and your lifestyle before you start the search will speed up the whole process. 
Police officer Emma and partner Kelly were not totally captivated by the first property we showed them. So this time, we're in Sandhurst, famed for its military academy. Here, Kelly gets a bigger house, but inevitably that means a pretty major compromise for Emma. Right. We have sacrificed a bit of the peace and quiet for size. What do you feel about the area, the road? Um, quite a few cars have, are going past, aren't they? Yes, you know, just worry for the cats more than anything else. They do get out the front, then they are pretty much on a quite a busy-ish main yeah. road. But this is a road with speed bumps, and at the back, there's a cul-de-sac. OK. And I don't think the cats are going to be interested in going out the front. I hope they're convinced, because this detached house is more than half as big again as the last one. Round with period features, it has two reception rooms, a pretty smart kitchen, three sizeable bedrooms and a decent garden. It's only been on the market for two weeks and it's bang on budget at 325 grand. What you've got here oh, okay, is the one. sort of diner. Um, this is really nice. It needs work doing to it straight away, yes, but yeah. you, could, you could still Well, they've in done here. a lot. They've, I mean, it, it, it needs finishing. You know, you've either got to paint these floors or sand them or carpet them. They've kitted out the kitchen. The only thing they haven't finished is the utility area at the back of the kitchen. OK. But it's really nice. Lovely. Mm. I really like it. Emma's being a bit quiet about this place. She can obviously see its strengths, but that road is a sticking point. It is an issue, but it's, it's not a sort of, because of the, the sleeping police, sorry, not sleeping policemen, you know. <laughs> <laughs> OK, they're not, what are they called? We don't road call them humps. sleeping policemen anymore, do we? No. Just road That's, humps. Is that politically incorrect to call a, a road hump a sleeping policeman? just because you're standing next to me, really. <laughs> 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 we think of another word. <laughs> Okay, road humps. Yeah, that's the one. Right, okie dokie. Oh dear, I'm not doing a good job with this whole road issue and it's frustrating because the house is perfect for them. Oh, it's a big bedroom, isn't it? It's a nice yeah. little fireplace there. Very it's big. cute. Still hear the noise, I can't hear. Yeah, it's still quite noisy outside. If they go for this house, it will be Emma that's doing the compromising. I suspect she may be the more flexible of the two. She minds about peace and quiet, and not just f for the cat's sake. But Kelly minds more about the size. We'll see. We will see. Oh, OK. Bathroom? Yeah. It's got, it's got bath. a bath. Yeah, it's got your bath. <laughs> it's OK size, isn't it? Well, it's all done, isn't it? It's all yeah. finished. Right. Yeah, brilliant. Oh, yeah, brilliant. Brilliant. Oh, it's big up there. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it is big up there. Yeah, it's big it's up fantastic. There. Yeah. There's a couple of compromises with the road and the noise. Yeah. But the property itself is fantastic. Right, off to brilliant. you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Emma's starting to see the value of all that space, but can she compromise on her top requirement? We have ourselves a right royal dilemma. OK, it is a bit of a noisy road. That was a bus just then, but it's very big. For Kate's second property in Liverpool, we're taking her closer to her current home in the Wavertree area. We've discovered that interior layout is important for our girls, so I've got a rather interesting proposition. Now, what we're doing today is quite unorthodox. Right. That is the house we're going to see. That is the house we want it to be. OK? Bear that in mind. OK. Will do. We've bagged Kate a third bedroom in this house because I think she should consider renting one to a maid. The property's had some work done and so is in a half-finished state, but I'm hopeful that my smart student will see its potential. It's at the top of Kate's budget at just under £120,000. Really, you're just looking at this house from the point of view of saying, what's at the back, what's at the front, where is it, what does it cost? And what can I do to it? And that brings us to the kitchen. Probably not to Kate's taste or tickling her open plan fancy. Well, not yet. So, basically, this goes... Yeah. So you, you have, have a big L. kitchen. Yeah, exactly. I could have my breakfast bar. You could have a breakfast bar. Yay! 100%. Right, upstairs there are not one, not two, but three bedrooms. What is the third bedroom for? Clothes. No, no wrong answer. Oh, a tenant to someone. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Fast learner. That's my gal. 
I love how much value you can add to this house. And I really like how open Kate was to that. For a first time buyer, she's quite brave. And with investment in mind, I've sweet talked the neighbour who's allowed us to sneak a peek at the end product. We go from one house yeah. to the next. Inside is a mirror image, but a whole lot lovelier to look at. The wall between the dining room and the kitchen has been whipped out to make this attractive L-shaped living space. I love this feel, this great big room. Well, it's exactly what I'd want, a nice yeah. L-shape as well, so the kitchen's still a little bit hidden. Obviously, I need to work out how much it would cost to get that to this. It's not a massive job, but it will test the flexibility of Kate's 120,000 budget. There's a wall to lose, a kitchen to refit, and the must-have breakfast bar to install. A good estimate would be around £12,000. If you've fallen for a property with project potential but aren't sure how to go about it, try charming your way into a place where the hard work's already been done and dusted. It could give you inspiration for interiors and more trade contacts than you ever dreamed of. So, does Waver Tree do the trick? Yes, it does. Yeah, it's a good, it's a maybe. It's a maybe. Yes. It's a good maybe. It's a good solid maybe, yes. To end day one with a good solid maybe is more than I often get, and I am not greedy. Day one. Success. Yeah. Good. On our search for the perfect first home that'll suit both Kelly and Emma, we've won last chance, and we're heading four miles southwest of Bracknell to Crowthorne, a large bustling village with a well stocked high street. I'm pinning all my hopes on this house, a 1950s semi, which pushes the size button for Kelly, but is also in a quiet location for Emma and the cats. It's the perfect combination. I'm not sure about the look of it. No, I'm not hundred sure of the look. Ooh. We like a more of a character-looking yeah. Victorian style, which that isn't. Oh, I certainly wasn't expecting that kind of reaction. This is a really good house and has the spacious feel of the last one we saw. It's got brilliant entertaining space, which is important to Kelly. It's got the three bedrooms they need and an 80-foot garden. The best thing is it's 15K under budget at £310,000, so there's plenty of money to put their stamp on it. Better inside than out? I don't feel it's big enough. Definitely you don't not. think it's big enough? No. How does it strike you? I don't know, really. I'm a bit gobsmacked at the moment. I don't know what to see. Gobsmacked by what? I don't know. I think it's the look of the house. Yeah. You know the look of the house, you think? Yeah. You don't like the look of the house? No. Not at all? This was the house that was supposed to bring them together. It has, but not in the way I was expecting. This is a real blow, because I was really pleased with this house. It's in such a lovely, peaceful, quiet location. It's well within budget, which leaves them ample funds to do whatever you need to groovy this house up. And their slightly petulant dismissal of it was a bit galling. Is it three? Three bedroom? Yeah. Two and a half? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's a silly to hope they're going to come downstairs and say, yay, this is the one for us, we've seen the light, we know you're right. This hasn't got the right feel, has it? It's not really for us. No. I don't get good feel either. No. Yeah. OK. For Kelly, it was size. For Emma, it was location. This was the only house that combined both. It's a bitter pill to swallow. Clearly, something has gone really badly wrong. What is so disappointing about this house, given that it's a good, peaceful location and that it's a good price and that you could alter it? Um, I don't know. It's, that's... In your mind, there was something better waiting out there mm -hmm. and it hasn't turned up. Yeah, maybe, yeah. Oh dear, we've obviously made a mistake with this place. Crowthorn's not the compromise we had it pegged as. This week we're catching up again with a couple who had a Southern Counties conundrum and a young Liverpool-loving law student who had £120,000 inheritance to spend on her first grown-up home after her father sadly passed away. Kate's looking to stay close to Egbert in South Liverpool. She adores the laid-back, villagey feel of this bohemian neighbourhood and she isn't the only one to fall for its charms. 
This is an iconic part of Liverpool. It's got a real buzz about it. The shops are amazing. It's just got something for everybody, really. It's got lovely parks around here, loads of lovely places to eat out. And there's nothing I like more than a walk in the park. Remember, I've come for an easy time today. <laughs> Don't make anything difficult, OK? I I'm not promising anything. <laughs> At least we must have won brownie points for bringing her to Eggbirth. You've got the location right, bang on. And inside, it just gets better, cos this property is a blank canvas. If Kate isn't afraid of knocking down walls, this pad could give her the open-plan living space she craves. This three-bedroom period terraced house has large, high-ceilinged rooms. It's currently empty and being sold privately, so Kate could complete and move in super quick. This house is at the top of Kate's £120,000 budget. You need to get in here, strip. The whole place. Take the walls off yeah. if you want open plan. Depends yeah. how open plan you want it. Like the house, like the house yesterday, yeah. I want a big L. Yeah. By removing a couple of walls, Kate could get a breakfast bar just like the one next door to property number two. It's bang on the money that I've got. Obviously, it doesn't leave any money to do the work, but that can be found. That's good news because it will take a few grand to create the open plan living space that she wants. So I still reckon it makes sense to rent a room to a fellow student to cover her costs. This is the second room. This There's is the second one. Front room, box room. So this would be my wardrobe. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm winding you up. <laughs> it would Come be, on, really be the room that you would Come rent out. out. Oh dear, Kirsty, Kate's not exactly sounding convinced. And then here would be your master bedroom. No, you are renting that other room. She doesn't have to. No, she she might want to live on her own. Because she's, she's, cause she wants to, to, to not come out of uni with debts. What would you rather? Do you want to live on your own and pay the bills? Or... Have you ever lived on your own? Also... No, but that's what I quite want to try, is living on my own. Renting a room could give Kate an income of about three grand per year. And with most students leaving university in debt, that kind of cash is not to be sniffed at. It's supposed to be about doing well in my degree next year, which will then set me up financially, hopefully, for much longer than a tenant would. That is a poor, poor I thought it was a brilliant economic no, twist on the no, argument. No, that you, you will be a good own. barrister, but that was a poor excuse. <laughs> <laughs> Objection, Your Honour. Overruled, Spencer. I'm just giving Kate the best advice I can. And I'm sure she'll be happy whatever she decides with her own mind. I feel my job is not just to find the house for her, but set her on the right path. With Kirsty clucking over Kate like a mother hen, it's time for me to bring some impartiality back to this search. Your job is to find a house for her. It's not to tell her how to, how to live. It's sensible to rent a room, yes, and you are is. deliberately undermining that argument for I kicks. Hopefully our bickering hasn't distracted Kate from seeing this pad's potential. Seen anything that troubles you? No. Could it be home? Yeah, I think it could, yeah. I'd obviously want to find out how much the work would cost mm -hmm. and yeah. things like that. Mm. But, yeah, it ticks all the boxes. It's a strong house. Very good for me. Yeah. 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 Kate seems smitten with this house, but will the job be manageable and within her grasp financially? For Kelly and Emma, it's been an emotional couple of days. They struggle to agree on the thorny issue of space versus location. This morning, we're back at the second property we showed them, the big detached house in Sandhurst. I have to say I'm a bit surprised, but I'll take it as read that Emma's done the compromising. So, what do you think? I think much better in daylight. Yeah, I definitely. feel so much better. Yeah. <laughs> you feel so much better. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right, OK, we've moved on. The main sticking points for this property are the busy road outside and the noise in the front bedroom. But we've been doing our homework and it's very simple to rectify. For about three grand, they could replace the windows with double glazed wooden sashes, but it would then take them over their £325,000 budget. We definitely need it in, in the bedroom. Yeah. I think where we're living now is quite quiet, so mm. I think we would be disturbed, I think, with the noise. Yeah, we'd hear the noise, wouldn't we? Yeah. 
The only other issue with this house is the unfinished utility room. Sprucing it up and putting a loo in here would improve the house, so we've asked a couple of builders to give it the once over. Well, that obviously used to be an old out outhouse. Yeah. Uh, ceiling heights are low in there, so the roof could come up and make room. It yeah. insulated it all up, and yeah, it can be turned out. There's drains outside. They may only be thinking about raising the roof a little bit, but my advice is always check with the planning office before signing up the builders. The ballpark figure of probably about four to five thousand pounds. Yeah. yeah. That's not okay. bad, is it? I've tried my hardest to put their minds at ease about this very good house. But is it enough for Emma to compromise on that quiet location for the cats? Very positive, I feel, at the moment. Do you think it's worth going and sitting down and having a chat about it? Yeah, definitely. Yeah, I think we need to, yeah. yeah. Oh, brilliant. Yes, definitely. Okay. It doesn't take long for Kelly and Emma to decide they want to go for the Sandhurst house, on at £325,000. Two glasses of cherry aid and a cup of tea. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do you want to pay for it? We, we've spoken about this, obviously up for three, two, five. We would like to be cheeky. What do you think? I'd go in at 305. Yeah, and see what they come back with. Yeah. Matt, it's Kirsty. We're doing very well, yeah. How do you think an offer of 305 would go down? Let's just see. I'm quite optimistic about this. I think that I've got strong, strong purchases, good position, Huge flexibility. So let's let's go in at 305 really, really positively um, and, and see what happens. Okay, bye. Is he gonna try and find out soon? Yes. Yeah. Um, I think the important thing is to keep one's cool. When their cheeky offer of 305,000 pounds is rejected, they counter with 310. But is it enough to seal the deal? Matt. Wow, that's fantastic news. <laughs> uh, OK, thanks, Matt. Bye. Hey. Hey. <laughs> I'm so pleased. I'm really, really, really pleased. Thank really you very pleased. much. Not at all. Don't cry. Oh. Thank you. Oh. It's really good. It's a really, really good house, and I think you'll be really happy there. That's two of our three damsels sorted, then. And in Egbert, Kate's not beating about the bush. She has designs on property three, the period terrace with potential for open-plan living. It's time for another look. If, like her, you've fallen for a pad that needs a facelift, then bring a tradesman to your second viewing. With their beady eye on the job, you'll work out how much dosh you need and can pitch your offer to match. I've asked local builder Chris Murphy along to work out whether it's wise to take these walls down. This one is not a problem. This is yep. fairly straightforward. Yep. This one's a bit more intricate because you've got a low burden. I'd say on that, 16, 1700 quid. On this one, maybe about 2500 upwards. Right. But it would make a great room. I don't want to spend too much money on a house. No. Especially just so I can have a breakfast bar, I really like that. Yeah, that's a two and a half thousand pound breakfast bar. Mm. Having given careful thought to the numbers, Kate's decided that she's in for a penny, in for a pound on the property. From the outset, we've always known that we've probably got to pay 120 for that house. I think it's a fair price, and I think if I don't pay that, somebody else will. Kate Harland, are you ready to spend 120,000 pounds on your first home, a three bed terraced house in Egbeth? Yeah, 100%. The house isn't being marketed through an agent, so I have to call the vendor directly. Harry, it's Kirsty, all sop. Thank you very much for letting us go back and see the house again, second time. Obviously, the house is vacant and Kate is eager to purchase it as soon as possible. So, I have been asked by Kate Harland, who is a cash buyer, and that means cash, actual money under the bed, readies to offer you £120,000 for your house. Dealing directly with the vendor has its advantages. That is the quickest transaction I have ever made, Harry. <laughs> Superb news. Kate's got herself a first home. Her dad would have been proud. Thanks, Dad. <laughs> Bought me a house. Yay! Well done. Well done, Do me. Do you think he'd be pleased? Uh, yeah, he would be very pleased. I'm in Liverpool, I'm in the city. It's a great house, and I'm happy, so he would have been happy. Yay. Here's to what your dad wanted. Cheers. Thanks, Dad. 
Six weeks later, though, Kate had a change of heart, deciding that the property was too much of a project to take on in tandem with full-time studies. I just wasn't really prepared to do that much work, so I walked away from the sale. And shortly after that, upon completion of her father's estate, she then realised she could increase her budget to 150000 Once I found out that I could up the budget, I wanted to invest it in the house rather than have the cash lying around. Because what am I going to do with £30,000 apart from buy handbags? Forsaking the handbags paid off handsomely, as just under two years ago, Kate then found this three-bed Victorian terrace in her beloved Egberth and bought it for £144,000. As soon as I walked in, I knew that I wanted it. It was just what I wanted, really light and airy. By that time, I'd been looking for 10 months, so I kind of was quite sure in what I, I knew what I wanted. So I felt confident spending that amount of money. There wasn't enough space for a breakfast bar, but Kate was able to create her much longed for open plan kitchen diner. However, in the process of buying the house, she fell ill with CIS, clinically isolated syndrome, which may be a precursor to multiple sclerosis. I thought I'd pulled a muscle going on a night out. I thought I just had a bad hangover, and it turned out that I didn't. I had this neurological condition and um, it affected the whole of the right side of my body, so um, I couldn't walk for a bit and I was in a wheelchair for a while. It has affected my lifestyle quite a bit in that I get tired quite frequently, but the doctors tell me to carry on as normal, so that I've just decided to do that. Her health setback meant Kate had to delay her law studies and graduate a year later than planned. But despite everything, she feels buying was very much the right move for her. I think having my own house really did help my studies and that's one of the things that I wanted to achieve when I set out to buy this place. Because I worked from home all the time, I'm not a go-to-the-library type of person, so it really was nice for me to be able to have my own place to spread out and really be able to crack on with my work. And it seems Kirsty's rather firmly planted seed about lodgers eventually germinated. I might have to say Kirsty was right, but because of my change in circumstances, I wasn't able to work. So having a spare room, getting a lodger in, made sense. And that's when I started realising that the house is an asset and it can work for me and, and it can earn me money, which I think is what Kirsty was trying to tell me. You know, this isn't just somewhere for you to live, this is an asset and you should use it. Having finished her studies, as much as she loves her house, Liverpool and Egbert, Kate's now decided to use her asset differently and let it out to move to Manchester near a family. Becoming ill has made me realise that I have to be closer to them. It'd be nice if I had to go and have to hospital if I was just around the corner from them. So I suppose I've become a lot more family orientated, which is never a bad thing. She plans to move in with her older brother, who's yet to find the ideal property in which to invest his inheritance. But his experienced house hunting sister is aiming to change that. I think my brother's middle name should be procrastination. So now that he's offered me a room, I've offered my um, services to help him. I've booked him 10 viewings for one day. So he's going to start looking whether he likes it or not. And that's one of the things that I definitely learned from Kirsty and Phil. You have to look at things that aren't right so that you'll know what is right. So I'm hopefully, hopefully I'll be able to show him that. I always thought she might do us out of a job. Sounds like Big Brother's going to benefit from Kate's move, and I hope it works for her too. Even though I've really enjoyed this house, it still is a lot of responsibility. So I'm looking forward to stepping down and be able to just go, oh well. I know I'll enjoy the city of Manchester. I think the career prospects are better. Living with my brother will be fun. And also it'll be less of a burden on me. After quite some ups and downs, having secured both home and investment, Kate's making another smart move, this time for her well-being, and we wish her all the very best. Two years on, has the Sandhurst compromise been a smart move for Kelly and Emma? We're back in Berkshire to see how police officer Emma and her partner, IT manager Kelly, are getting on after their emotional house hunt. 
When Emma and Kelly started looking for a home, they wanted very different things. Emma wanted a view of green grass fields. Kelly wanted a project. But they agreed on this detached house here in Sandhurst. And I've come to see what they've done with it and also to find out whether compromise has paid off or not. Anyone home? <laughs> <Kelly>? Come in. <laughs> nice to see you. <laughs> Kirsty was able to do a good deal and she got the house for them at 310,000, which was 15 grand under budget. So I'm interested to see what that bought them. Well, I thought I'd better come along, seeing as Kirsty found it. You know, I like to check she's done her job right. <laughs> are, are you happy? Did you think you made the right choice? Yeah, no, yeah, we love it. As soon as, we, as soon as we, we came in the door, we, we kind of fell in love with it then, didn't we? Yeah, as, yeah, as soon as we, when we both knew as soon. Since we walked in, that we, this is going to be the new new house, and new home for yeah. us. So. You, you had the feeling. Yes, yes that feeling. feeling. We had the feeling. <laughs> can I have a look around? Which can? Yeah, of course. Yeah. Oh, you better. I'm so used to leading people around <laughs> houses. It's your house. I'll follow you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> when they bought it, the three-bed house was in fairly good nick, but the girls have now finessed and fully redecorated it. Oh, purple in here. Yeah, we both really like purple. Cool. And what's happened down the end there? Yeah, so we, um, the space was already there, but it was a bit of a dead space. So we put a downstairs toilet um, and a utility area just to kind of make it into a space yeah. that we could actually use. Great. It's worked out very well, hasn't yeah, it? Yeah, probably. It's a vast improvement from two years ago. Kelly and Emma spent £5,000 rebuilding and replumbing the lean-to. And it's been a thoroughly solid investment, given that originally their only toilet was upstairs. You have done well. It's great. Making the house their home has seen this industrious pair work their way through every room over the last two years, painting, wallpapering and titivating. And is it done now? Finished? Yeah, yeah, the whole the house is done. Yeah, the last one we did we finished a couple of months ago was the hall stairs and landing. Oh. And that was a, that was a task and a half. But we did it. We did, mm. We've done it all, just the two of us, with the help of the family, so. It is quite a daunting prospect. Did you enjoy it? Uh, I did enjoy it. I think Kelly enjoyed it a little bit more than me. Kelly's the decorator. So I'm the, I'm the uh, finisher offer, I'd okay. like to think myself, putting the knickknacks and buying the new bits like that, and then Kelly's yeah. the main uh, decorator, really. She enjoys it far more than I do. One decorating diva's all you really need on the team. And the hard work may not just have been confined to the inside of the house. I'll show you the garden, that's the last bit, and there's yeah. a, a little... Fluffy surprise there. Oh, really? <laughs> a fluffy surprise. <laughs> Sadly, Emma and Kelly's beloved cats have now both passed away, but it sounds like there might be a new addition to the family. So this is one of our little surprises. Oh! Little Molly. There's a friend. There's a friend <laughs> to play with. Hello, Molly. <laughs> Hello. 18-month-old Molly gets the run of the back garden, and I can only hope she appreciates the quality of her surroundings, which includes a new decked chill-out zone. The whole house does look fantastic. In fact, the garden looks fantastic as well. <laughs> Are you now actually enjoying it? Are you getting yeah, time? Yeah. We're now actually relaxing a bit more. Now all the rooms yeah. are done, and yeah, now the garden's doesn't... finished. It kind yeah. of, it's now kind of just chill time now. Yeah, enjoy, enjoy it. it. Well, that was what it was about, wasn't it? Yes. It was actually having time together. Yes, yeah. definitely. Did you feel that you made compromises at the end? Uh, yeah, with, with the road being as busy as it was, um, yeah, that's probably our biggest compromise. It's quite noisy out there now, but it's, you kind of get used to it. You it's... didn't get the countryside views that, no, that you I wanted didn't. at the beginning, but no, you, you got an awful lot of other things. Yeah, definitely. Now definitely. we've got a nice garden, so yeah, that's exactly. Yes. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, you know, we've got a big park and local forests and stuff we can walk yeah. Molly in, and that's... yeah, it's just brilliant. I thoroughly enjoy it. Mm -hmm. So the house is um, in between both our parents, really. So yeah, you know, they they come over quite a bit, and so they can yeah. stay in the rooms that we've got. So um, yeah. yeah, they're happy. There's plenty of space. Yeah, yeah. our neighbours are brilliant both sides. Yeah, they're brilliant. Um, really good neighbours. So they've been there. Uh, They've been brilliant for us and they help yeah, us out when we need them, so... Great neighbours, parks nearby and a lovely, lovely home. Could it get any better? We actually got engaged a couple of weeks ago as well, Oh, so fantastic. That was the plan. Yeah, oh, yeah. brilliant. Well done. So, yeah. <laughs> yes, that's the plan, yeah. <laughs> yes. But yeah, that was... Uh, Excellent. Yeah, it was a good, nice surprise and... Oh, well, congratulations. Yeah, well. So you. now, yeah, wedding to plan. I know, yeah. There's no stopping. I know. Yeah. <laughs> Finish the house, plan something else. <laughs> yeah. We <laughs> like things to do. <laughs> There's clearly no holding these two back. They're already on to the next chapter. 
You're rarely able to tick every single box when house hunting, but this place really did offer enough of what Emma and Kelly were looking for. And after a fair bit of hard work on their part, they now have a fabulous home to enjoy together. So it's all smiles in Sandhurst. Thank you.